What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're back with the 95 Corolla wagon again and we're gonna do the valve cover gasket because, well, it has a little bit of an issue. Let me show you. Once we open the hood and look at it, you might not be able to tell at first glance, but this is actually all covered in oil. The valve cover gasket has completely gone out and it's actually not so much the valve cover gasket as it is the spark plug tube seals. <laughs> you probably heard that and uh, obviously you can see this is covered in oil and it's actually misfiring on this cylinder because there's so much oil in here the spark cannot travel to the spark plug. So of course I got a valve cover gasket kit. It comes with the spark plug tube seals which is basically the main thing that we need. It comes with the little grommets that go around the bolts that hold down the valve cover and of course the valve cover gasket itself. And because the spark plug wires are soaked in oil I got new ones. Uh, I don't want to reuse the old swollen ones and I'll show you exactly why. Overall this procedure is actually very easy. All we have to do is get rid of everything that's on top here. This wire, spark plug wires, and the two hoses in the back, four nuts, and it comes right off. Super easy. So start over here and remove this wire. Now yours might be held on with these two bolts, but mine are broken. Get the PCV out of here. And then you have this hose over here. Pinch the hose clamp, and it's very weak, so you can just do it by hand. And it looks like this hose is cracked, so I might have to get some new rubber hose here, but doesn't matter for now, we'll just get it out of here. Okay, obviously I'll probably get a new hose. And the next thing I want to do is pop off all the spark plug wires and that's it. We're ready to take the valve cover off. Just pull straight up on them. Sometimes they'll be stuck in there. Other times, especially when they're soaked in oil, they'll come out pretty easy. I don't want to disconnect these yet, even though I am replacing them. I just want to set them aside, we'll do the job, and then we'll worry about these. 10 millimeter socket, remove the four nuts that hold this on. One last thing left to do is to pop the valve cover off. So let's see what a 356,000 mile valve train looks like. This is not the first time that I've opened this valve cover, so I already know what it's gonna look like. But 356,000 miles, that's a lot. Most likely it's gonna be stuck on here, especially because it has these grommets, the spark plug tube seals, and then the rubber itself from the valve cover gasket usually gets stuck just from the heat. Grab a little pry bar and uh, just try to help it along. There are not many areas where you can actually pry so just be very careful when you do this because you don't want to break it. Oops, lost a grommet, that's okay. Let's try not to lose the other ones too. There it is. Well, this doesn't look too bad if you ask me. So, as you can see in there, this is the cylinder number one spark plug, and it is just full of oil. So I'm gonna pull the spark plug out, and the only thing to do here is to let the oil drain into the cylinder, unfortunately, and I'll clean out the spark plug. That's just how it's gonna have to be. It's gonna have to burn out. There's nothing else I can do about it. I don't have anything that I can put down there and suck it up, but even so, it's not all that much. You can still see the spark plug in there, obviously, so it's not like it's full. It's just, you know, there's oil in there. The other three are actually clean, or dry, I should say. So those are all set, but I will pull that one and clean it out. Before we move on to the valve cover itself, I just want to get all the oil off of the block here, or off the head, I should say. And uh, obviously, make sure not as little as possible gets on the timing belt. This is also a good time to inspect your timing belt. I know mine is so good. Wipe off everything. Before reinstallation, I will degrease it with brake parts cleaner. For now, I just want to prevent anything from leaking externally <laughs> more than it already has. If your problem is as bad as this one where it has leaked all over, for me, it leaked on the alternator bracket, it went down on the timing belt cover, it kind of just went this way and down. 
expect to use about two to three cans of brake clean to clean it all up. Obviously, I'm not too worried about wiping off anything inside here, just the surface where the gasket rides. I'm gonna wipe these down as well, just to ensure a nice clean mating surface. And like I said, I will degrease everything when the time comes. Now I think it's time to go get that old valve cover gasket off so we can get the new one installed. All right, over on the workbench slash tailgate, you can see the old gasket is, well, maybe you can't see, but it's very hard. It's, it's not really rubberized anymore. It's very, very stiff. Matter of fact, I just cracked it right there by pulling it out. So it's not, not good. Um, pull it off the rest of the way, throw that away. Before we clean anything, let's punch out these so that they can be out of here before we clean. We'll clean everything, then we'll put the new ones in. To punch these out, it's not that difficult. You actually just flip it over and you take a punch or a screwdriver, whatever you have, and you just send them through. So, the end result is that. You got your extremely brittle pieces over here. These are all trash. I'm not gonna bother with a rag. I'm actually just going to spray brake parts cleaner everywhere. Get this all degreased, nice and clean. I cleaned up this valve cover on both sides because it was basically covered in oil on the outside as well. Made it nice and shiny. Well, not really shiny, just not oily. And then I cleaned out the inside as well and especially in the groove where the valve cover gasket sits and the little cutouts where the spark plug tube seals sit. So I'm gonna give this a few minutes to dry off, but while this is drying off, I'm gonna pull out the number one spark plug and let the uh, cylinder kind of, well, just air out, I guess. Not that the oil's gonna evaporate, but at least that'll give it some time to uh, drain. Oh, wow. Who tightened these last? Me? Yeah. Well, I need a longer tool. Longer tool, acquired. Get out of there now. Okay. Why was that so tight? This is gonna be full of oil. Oh yeah. Now I don't have new spark plugs, but I'm just gonna clean this one up. I actually installed these less than 10,000 miles ago, so they're still good. I don't want to waste them. I also don't want to buy new spark plugs, so we'll just clean them up. So when it comes time to installing the spark plug tube seals, they are directional. You can only put them in a certain way. Uh, well, actually, you can put them in here in either direction, but they won't fit on the spark plug tubes in any direction. So as you can see, they have one side that has a beveled lip to it. The other side is flat and narrower. Well, the spark plug tube needs to slide in through the beveled edge because this guides it in. Otherwise, on the back side, it won't seat. It's just, it's not gonna go in. So keep in mind, the spark plug tube comes in from this side, so you need to make sure you have the beveled edge facing upwards towards you when you install it, not like this. Another way to figure out which way it goes is this flat part needs to face the valve cover because it needs to bottom out on the valve cover. This part, although it is flat and it will bottom out, is not as wide as this. So think about when you remove them. When you remove them, you punched this area. If you had this, you can't really get a grip on it. It's just gonna poke through. Optional but recommended is to put some oil on the outside of the seal so that it can slide in a lot easier and even a tiny bit on this surface here, but you don't have to. You'll see these tabs here. These, you're probably gonna have to pry upwards. They're just soft metal. If they happen to break off, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you fish it out. Don't leave it in here. So now, put your seal in. Make sure it's facing the right way. And start it with your fingers to make sure that it actually starts properly. But obviously you won't be able to push it down too far. And now you wanna take either a socket or a seal installer, whatever you have that'll fit in here. This is a 32 millimeter socket. You could definitely also use a 34, uh, but a 32 fits okay for me. It's a tiny bit small, but it still fits on this outer lip. So that's what you're looking for. And just very gently tap it through until it bottoms out. And what you're looking for is if you look through the outside, you should be able to see it completely bottomed out up against that top lip. Grab the socket. 
and tap it down gently. It's hard to see, but you can see in there it's completely bottomed out up against that aluminum lip on the valve cover. Don't forget to bend this back down if you had to bend it out of the way. Make sure it's nice and flat. And now, let's just repeat the process for the rest of them. Now we just have to lay down the new valve cover gasket. So just follow the groove. It's Pretty self-explanatory because one side is straight, the other side has the two cutouts or the, the curves, so it can only go on one way. Press it down all the way. All right, let's go clean the surface where this mounts and we'll get it mounted. Now I wanna take some brake parts cleaner on a clean paper towel and wipe off the surface where the gasket will sit. You want it nice and degreased so it can get a good seal. Now that everything is degreased, there are actually three spots where we need to put RTV. This right here is gonna be two of them, one on each side of this hump, and then one right here where there's this cover plate. Because it's such a small area, it'll be easiest to apply with your finger. Just make sure you have a glove because this stuff isn't, you know, great to touch for you. And you don't need a lot. You just need to cover up the areas where it might be difficult for just a rubber gasket to seal up. So right here, where it's a very sharp angle, that's what you want to cover, just like that. And of course on the other side, and then right here where there's that crack. Well, it's not a crack, it's a split. And keep in mind if you put too much, well, it's going to squish out and get into places where it shouldn't be, such as in here, in the oil, in the timing belt. So just a, a tiny bit should do the job. And then you actually want to do the same over here where the distributor is. Now you can take your valve cover and slide it right on. As you do this, pay attention to all four of the spark plug tubes to make sure that they actually seat in properly and uh, don't mess with the seal in any negative way such as rip it or move it around or anything like that okay looks like it's all seated perfectly grab your new grommets slide those on make sure the metal washer faces up and then grab your four mounting nuts and we'll tighten them up don't go crazy tight with this just make it snug Make sure they're all even. After you drive it for a little bit, it is actually a good idea to come back and double check these because as the gasket heats up and seats, it will loosen up. Well, it can. It not, it's not guaranteed, but it can loosen up. So just double check these. That way you don't get another leak with a brand new gasket. Here's the spark plug that I cleaned up. It looks fine. So like I said, I'm just gonna reinstall it. it's snug obviously when I changed it last I might have over tightened it a little bit but it's good now I'm gonna put my oil cap back on I took it off when I was putting the spark plug tube seals in because I didn't want to hammer up against this which is plastic I would rather the vibrations transfer directly through the valve cover put this wiring harness back and of course if yours still had the two securing points here put that back mine are long gone they're all broken off in the back, reinstall the PCV hose and the PCV valve, depending on how you took it off. Mine comes off easier if I just take the valve out. And as for this hose, I will have to buy a new one, but for now I'm just gonna put this one back. It shouldn't cause too many issues. The crack didn't go all the way through. Uh, it's only partially in, but just for this one startup, it should be okay but I will buy a new hose. The last thing we have to deal with is the spark plug wires. And like I said, I have new ones to replace these with because not only are these old, they're not too old, uh, but they are somewhat worn out. But also the oil being soaked in here actually swelled up the rubber. So as you can see, this seal will not 
basically seal up anymore. This is supposed to sit flat up against the cutouts on the valve cover and this will no longer do that. I'm also worried about these seals here. I think these were also damaged and uh, potentially somewhat swollen. So I just got new spark plug wires and I'm gonna show you how to replace them. So the advantage on this vehicle is that they are all different lengths. Cylinder four is the shortest, cylinder one is the longest. So even if they're not labeled, there is no way to put them on the wrong way. The only thing you have to pay attention to is where they come off on the distributor. The distributors are always marked. You can just figure it out based on the uh, direction of which it's spinning. I'm gonna pop them out of these retainers. I want them all individually separated. And uh, obviously I'm gonna reuse these retainers. So I will unplug them all at the same time because like I said, the distributor is marked and I can just follow those directions. But if you wanted to, you could just do them one at a time. To unplug these, it's actually pretty simple. You have to push it in. As you can see, this moved in a little bit. And then there's a clip on the back side. I'll show you in a second. You have to pry that out, as in down that way. And that's it, that just unclips. This is the clip that I was talking about. You just pry it out like that and that's it. So I'm just gonna do the rest of them. Okay, and to put them back, just look at the cap and you'll see the numbers, or if you took them off one by one, just uh, put them back one by one. But clip it on, make sure you press it all the way. There we go, takes a little bit of force. So this is number four, number three is gonna be this one up top. Two is gonna be on the bottom. Last but not least, number one, right here. Okay, that just clicked. It takes a lot of force to put these on when they're brand new. Just a side note. I always like to add some silicone paste to the inside. Some might already have some, but usually not enough. So, add a tiny bit. Don't go overboard with it. All you want this to do is one, seal up, and two, prevent it from sticking onto the spark plug in the future. Tap it down, make sure it clicks in. And just go down the line and connect them all from the shortest to the longest. I like to tie these out of the way on their retainers because it's just not great to have the wires dangling, but also it's not good to have them interfere with each other. So if you have them wrapped around each other, that's not good because they do actually have some electromagnetic uh, field to them and you don't want it to affect the way the vehicle runs. So just try to arrange these in a way in which they can be nice and straight without interfering with each other. All right, so as long as we did everything correctly, this should start and run perfectly fine. Let's try it out. Have it that is how you fix the valve cover gasket oil leak fix the spark plug tube seals we replace them with new ones and we even put in new spark plug wires and it runs great now i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it was helpful if you want to see more videos on the corolla i will link the playlist in the description and more videos are coming so stay tuned having said that don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one